What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. Welcome to a new series called How Do I Make That in Squarespace, where viewers submit designs and I show how to create them in Squarespace. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at these three user submitted layouts. Let's jump right in. So to apply our background color to the heading, what we need to do is we first need to target this heading using its block ID. And so here we can see this is the text block and here is our block ID. So I'm gonna pull that block ID, copy and paste it into my custom CSS window. And in CSS, you target IDs with a hashtag. So I've opened up some curly brackets here and now uh, we specifically before the opening curly bracket, we need to be targeting the H2 within this text block. And now I'm gonna give it a background color of white to match our example. Now the problem that you see here is um, there's no definition between the lines. Like in our example, uh, there are two distinct blocks. And right now we just have one solid block. And so in order to get them to be two different blocks, what we have to do is actually uh, separate them into two different H2 headings. So I just hit enter to drop that down to a new line. Um, so now these are completely separate lines. Um, and that allows us to get that space in between. So the problem that we're running into is our background color is not being restricted to however long the text line is. The background color is just taking up the full width of the block. So in order to fix that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a display of inline block. And if I spell it right, inline block. So now our background is just conforming to however long the text line is. Now a problem that we're running into is we have a lot of margin in between. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put the mod margin bottom for these headings to zero. And so now the only space in between is the amount of margin on the top of the heading, but there's not also margin on the bottom of the first line. So that closes that gap, uh, which is nice. If you wanna close the gap further, uh, then you would just adjust the margin top and we can set it to like five pixels, for example. And now there's a really small gap. We also are, it's feeling a little crowded. We need some extra space on the left and the right of our headings. So let's go ahead and add some padding to the left of let's say 10 pixels. And I'm also gonna add some padding to the right of 10 pixels. So now we get a little bit of breathing room, but the last problem that we have to address is that it's left aligned, even though in the editor, our text is centered. So it's a problem that occurs because we've set the display to inline block. So if I comment that out, you'll see that it goes back to being centered, but then we lose that background only being as long as the text block. So it's a problem, but we can't avoid it if we want our background color to only be as long as the line of text is. So the way to get around that is to set a text align of center on the parent. So here we have our H2s and here is the parent container. So if I set a text align of center on this parent container, you can see that immediately it jumps back to being centered, which is exactly what we want. So what we can do is we can change this around a little bit. What I'm gonna do is drop that down and I'm gonna open up some curly brackets and we're gonna nest this CSS that we've already wrote for the H2. We're now nesting it inside of this block now I can drop down and I can target that other element, the parent element, within that same block ID. So now we're gonna target the .sqs block content element and we'll give it a text align of center. And there we go. So if, you're, if your text needs to be centered, um, this is a necessary step to ensure that your text gets centered. So this is how you can set up a background color heading just with CSS. And of course, if you wanted to add this to another heading on another page, all you would have to do is find that block ID and then also add the block ID separated by a comma here. 
for this layout here, I think the simplest way to create it would be, and I think this is actually how they did it, would be to have this section here or this chunk of content here just be an image card block because you can upload an image and then you can set up your title and description and then you can also choose to have a button link on in the image card. Uh, and then you just set it to overlay the banner image and that's all, you can do all of that in the site style. So there's no customization that you need for this layout. So once you get your image card set up, you just make sure it doesn't go the full width of the content by putting a spacer block here. And then for the background banner to make it look like it's overlaying, you just create a background banner that has a white background with this pattern here uh, on the left hand side of the image and then with this other image as part of the background banner as well. So you could even have like a nice parallax effect where um, you could set a background banner image effect for the background banner image and then it would scroll at a different speed than this image block which is on top. Um, so it's a a cool layout. It looks like there's a lot of depth to it because there's a lot of overlays, um, but it's actually really simple to set up with an image card block, spacer block to make sure it doesn't go full width, and then a background banner image with the image and the texture on a white solid background. The easiest way to create a split layout is definitely with the CSS from my course. Before we paste in the CSS, let's go ahead and set up our section. So we'll add a new section, uh, and I'll just add a blank section, so I'll show you the process from start to finish. So in our example, we had a headline, so we'll say this is my headline, and we'll make this bigger, we'll make it like an H2. And then below that, uh, we'll just have a bunch of paragraph text. And the nice thing about the method with the CSS from my course is that you can drop any blocks in here. You can add a button block if you want, Next, we're gonna add a background image, and this is going to be the image that's either on the left or the right. We'll add this image here. And now that we have our section set up for our split layout, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save this, and then I'm gonna copy and paste the CSS from my course into the custom CSS window, and then we'll jump back into the site. So I've pasted in the CSS from my course. Now to set up the split layout, all you have to do once the CSS is pasted in there is we're gonna change the content width to 47, and then we're gonna change the content alignment based on whether we want our image, or excuse me, whether we want our content on the left or the right. So in the example, the image was on the left and the content was on the right, so we'll go ahead and align this content to the right, and once we click save, then you'll see our split layout will be all set up. So that's how easy it is to create a split layout. Then on mobile, the image automatically stacks on top of the content. So definitely uh, there is no easier CSS than the one from my course. Uh, and of course, if we wanted the banner on the right instead of the left, all we'd have to do is change the content alignment there. The other great thing about using the method from my course is that it's really easy to change the color of the section theme in 7.1. You can change it to any of the other color themes that you have it set up really quickly and really easily. So it's that easy to create split layouts with the CSS from my course, and it's definitely by far the best way to do it. All right, that's a look at those three designs. Thank you to everyone that submitted layouts for this video. If you're interested in taking my custom layouts in Squarespace course, check out the free training in the description below. You'll get a preview of the course, and then you'll also get an opportunity to get $30 off the already low price. So I definitely recommend you sign up for the training. It's totally free and you'll probably learn something cool even if you don't end up buying the course in the end. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.